I get asked all the time, do I have extra hours in my day that other people don't have? And the answer is, yes I do. No, I'm joking, but on a serious note, I do manage to pack a lot into my day, week, month, whatever you want to call it. As a full-time medical student, I have to be really, really good with managing my time. But on top of that, I do YouTube, I own a business, I have a job, I go to the gym regular, and I also take a lot of pride in my social life. So the question is, how do I do it? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Amelia and I am a second year medical student, as you probably gathered from my introduction. But today I'm going to be talking about how I managed to pack in so much into my day, week, month as a full-time medical student with lots of other commitments and also trying to maintain a little bit of a normal life as well. If that's something you're interested in, please stick on to watch and I'm not going to ramble on too much. I'm just going to get straight into the video of some of the things that I do to give me a few extra hours in my day and allow me to fit in a lot of things into my day. So the first one is to treat your week like a jigsaw. So I start every single week by looking at my diary, looking at my calendar, looking at my commitments and looking at the big things, the big picture things I absolutely categorically have to get done that week. My non-negotiables if you'd like to say that. I then make a blueprint of what I want to achieve each day of the week. I try and allocate a big job per day. So for example if I know I need to get A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, done. I will try and do A on one day, B on another day, C on another day, and I'll allocate the big jobs, the big non-negotiables that I have to get done per day. And that is the absolute minimum that I'm going to do in that week. So if I do nothing else, this is what I want to get done that week. And that is basically what I go off. So these non-negotiables that I have to get done in the week, I try and fit them into the week like a jigsaw. And I try and think, right, when's best to do A? When's best to do B? When's best to do that? And then I allocate each big job a day. That brings me on to the art of organisation. So they kind of coexist and they have to coexist for either to work. Organisation is so important and it's often a word that gets thrown about quite frequently. If you you are a person who has a lot on and a lot of commitments you have to be organized and if you're not it will come back to bite you at some point whether it's a missed deadline or you've forgotten to do something or you should be somewhere where you're not because you're somewhere else you double booked yourself whatever it is it will come back to bite you it has me multiple times and that's why I find I have to be organised. So some simple things that I really, really like to do to help with my organisation are things like having a calendar. I know a lot of people do have calendars and for me, I have mine on my phone because sometimes it's tricky to carry around a paper calendar all the time or a book or whatever it is. I have mine on my phone. As soon as I make a plan, as soon as I make a commitment, it goes straight in my calendar. That A gives me a chance to see if I've already got something on the day so I don't double book myself, overspread myself. And it also B makes sure that I will not forget that I've committed to something or said I'll do something and it doesn't go over my head because quite often when you're busy, it's very easy for things to slip through your mind. And I I always say to people like if it's not in my calendar it is not happening because if something is not in my phone calendar I won't be there basically so that is the first thing that I do to help with my organization and help with me being where I need to be and then the other thing that I really really like to do is the little daily tasks that you think oh I need to do that I need to do that and quite often slip over your head also so I have a notes app on my phone and as soon as I think oh I need to do that I put it in my notes app and that allows me to, if I've ever got time to be getting something done, I can look at my notes, look at my little mini tasks that I need to do and work my way through them in no particular order. Literally anything goes in this little notes list that I have, like whether it's clean my room, message somebody, but anything I have to do goes in the notes. That brings me on to minutes are hours. And you might be thinking, what do you mean by that? But do you know those times that happen quite frequently where you don't have enough time to do something, but it's also time where you're not doing anything and it's like oh I don't have enough time to start something or to do a task but I also have nothing to do right now so I'm just going to sit here and they are usually the times that you get out your phone and you scroll on Instagram or TikTok or whatever it is but you're just mindlessly scrolling and wasting time. Those times are precious and you're probably thinking how are those times precious when I've got 10 minutes before a lecture or I'm waiting for my food to cook in the oven or I'm sat on a bus. There are times that you can be getting stuff done that you just don't get time to do. You're getting your phone out and you're scrolling on TikTok or Instagram or whatever you're doing. That is 
prime time to be getting something done that you actually need to get done and I know it doesn't seem like a lot like 20 minutes here 15 minutes there five minutes here 10 minutes there but those minutes add up to hours and that is precious precious time that you could be getting things that you actually need to be doing done if you are finding yourself to not have enough time to do things that you need to do those times are literally prime time to get things done and I'm not saying to don't rest you need to be resting but to me five minutes before a lecture or 10 minutes on the bus that is not resting time that is hanging around waiting time which you could convert into doing something time and then over the period of the day when you've achieved everything you need to do then you've gained yourself an hour at night to rest or to do something that you really really want to do rather than need to do sometimes it's easy to say oh i can't do what i need to do because i've not got the stuff to do it but literally everyone has a phone when you get your phone out to scroll on tiktok instead do something else like if you've got an essay plan to write start in your notes write some ideas down you're 10 percent of the way there to completing your essay plan chipping away at things in those times where you don't really usually tend to use or optimize is a great way to actually get things done. The next thing that I do is I plan as I go. And I know I started this video talking about the jigsaw, the blueprint, you know, making a plan, being organized, and making sure I know when I need to do things, etc. But do you know those little things that you just don't quite get a chance to do but aren't that high on my priority list or whatever else? I kind of just slot them into my day. I slot them into my jigsaw and that is where I plan as I go. So tomorrow I don't really know if I'm gonna have bags of time, if everything's gonna go to plan and if I'm going to have any free time. However, I get my priorities done. I get the big things I really want to achieve done. And then I try and slot things in as I go and plan as I go. So I have a list of things I want to do and I slot it in whenever I have time. And then if I don't get that done, it's not a massive deal because it's not quite there on the priority list. If they were, they would be their non-negotiables at the start of the week. This is what I have to get done. I kind of slot into the jigsaw as I go and if I don't get it done it's not a big deal it just rolls over into the next day and if I have a bit of free time the next day I try and get some more things off my list done and that really helps like to plan as you go to not try and overspread yourself a bit of flexibility as well is important and I think it is good to have a good balance like you've got some people who like to plan every minute of the day and then some people who don't plan at all like I find being in the happy medium is what works for me and what allows me to really get the most out of my day. The next thing I do is categorize and prioritize. So it's really important to ask yourself, what areas of my life are most important to me? What am I working towards? What do I want to achieve? What am I actively wanting to do with my week? Because at the end of the day, there's no point doing something that you're not really interested in or you're not wanting to do, you're not wanting to achieve, you're not wanting to work towards. Like if that is in your week, like it shouldn't be, if it's not important to you or if it's not up there on your priority, why is it in your week when you've got other things? You need to make time for the things that matter and time for the things that are important to you, to your goals and to your life. This is going to be very individual to the person. For example, my big things I'm really focusing on at the minute are academics, my YouTube, exercise, maintaining a social life. I try and give time to each of these things per week. They are my big four things that I really try and allocate time to every single week. Some weeks might be different to others and that's where the prioritisation comes in because if I have an essay due in or if I have an exam or if I have something really, really important in uni, like especially in exam season, obviously my academic work is going to be taking up a lot more time than the other things or say if I've had a really really heavy week at uni I'm feeling a bit like I need a bit of a break the academics is going to take a bit less time and I might allow more time for exercise or social or whatever it is and it's really important to prioritize based off what's going on in your life based based on what you need to achieve and based off how you're feeling only you can make a priority list and it is going to change and it is going to vary and it is just important to be very conscious of that and I think when you are very conscious of this that really really helps with your time management so just in a summary just try and be very conscious of the things that are most important to you the things that you want to allocate your time to and the priorities of those things each category is going to shift based off what is going on and it's just very important to be conscious and aware of that and 
allocate time accordingly. And the last thing I want to talk about is efficiency is key. And this has kind of only become really, really apparent to me over the past few months. We only get 24 hours in a day. We only get however many hours in a week. I can't do the math on the spot. It is so important to be efficient because you've only got that set time and you can only do what you can do with that set time and the only way you're gonna make more time out of your day is by being efficient it used to literally take me about four or five hours to do a lecture for example and i found a way to be really efficient in my lecture technique so now it takes me maybe two hours three hours if it's a really really chunky lecture so i've kind of gained two hours per lecture that i do to do something else and it's really important to be trying to figure out ways to be more efficient not even just in your academics but just in life in general because the only way you're going to gain more time for yourself and gain more time to do things that you want to do or things that you want to achieve is by either cutting something out of your life making time that way or being more efficient in things you do have in your life and efficiency is something that comes with time but also practice or exploring different ways of doing things and it's really important to do both it's really important to allow yourself time but also explore different ways is there a way that you can cut something that takes you an hour into half an hour because if there is you've just gained yourself 30 minutes and i'm sure everyone would love an extra 30 minutes in the day so they are all ways that i have kind of developed in my day-to-day -day routine in my life to really really make my time go as far as possible and i do just want to add at the end that it is so important to be allocating time to rest as well you can be getting things done as much as you want but unless you are actively taking time to rest then it's not sustainable and that is definitely something i have realized over the past couple of months as well i've actually gotten myself some knitting needles now to allocate myself some rest time in my day please 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 be taking time to rest as well as be achieving all the amazing things that you were wanting to achieve so yeah that is it they are all methods and strategies that i use to get the most out of my day week and month and really really be hitting my goals that i'm trying to achieve so thank you so much for watching um, if you have enjoyed, I would really love it if you would like and comment down below and subscribe to my channel. Thank you once again and I shall see you in the next one.